So you're thinking of getting a SIG Energy system installed. Before you spend thousands of pounds, let me show you five critical things that quite a lot of people miss. Make sure you don't overlook these things or it could end up costing you thousands of pounds. And really quickly, if we haven't met, my name's Jordan. I'm a solar PV designer and I've helped hundreds of homeowners and businesses make smarter decisions with their solar installs. So let's get right into this and make sure that you have all the information that you need. So tip number one, the eight kilowatt hour battery is better value than the five kilowatt hour battery. So with SIG Energy, there is two different battery sizes that are available. You've got the eight kilowatt hour battery and you've got the five kilowatt hour battery. These can be mixed and matched, but when you're looking at the best value for money, the eight kilowatt hour is better value. So for the price per kilowatt hour you pay, the eight kilowatt hour does work out to be a lower price. So if you can afford to increase your capacity a little bit to get the eight kilowatt hour battery. The price per kilowatt hour is lower. And a bonus tip for tip number one is the eight kilowatt hour battery also has a higher discharge rate compared to the five kilowatt hour battery. So just to define the discharge rate, that's how much energy at a given time that can be taken from the battery. So with the five kilowatt battery, the continuous discharge rate is 2.5 kilowatts. So at any point it can discharge 2.5 continually until the battery is depleted. And it can also have a peak discharge rate of 3.75 kilowatts. And that's for 10 seconds. Whereas with the eight kilowatt battery, the discharge rate is four kilowatts continuous. And for 10 seconds, the peak discharge rate is six kilowatts. Not only is the eight kilowatt hour better from a price per kilowatt perspective, you're also getting better discharge. Of course, in absolute terms, the eight kilowatt hour battery is more expensive. It's a larger battery, but you do get a battery that has a higher discharge rate and a better price per kilowatt ratio. So definitely go for it if you can. All right, tip number two. So you don't need to get the gateway straight away. So question I get asked quite a lot is, Jordan, do you actually need the gateway? Is it something you'd recommend? My answer is yes, I would recommend it. But if you don't get a lot of power cuts and you're also not gonna kick yourself if you ever do get a power cut and find you can't use the energy you have in your batteries, if you're just not concerned about that, skip out on the gateway. You'll save yourself around 700 to 1,000 pounds and you'll have all the same features you otherwise would have had apart from backup function and also a few things to do with certain dedicated circuits. You can connect things like backup generators and heat pumps to it as well, but there'll be very, very special cases. You can also retrofit the gateway after if you want to. It will be extra work because obviously someone's going to have to come around again and there will be more labor involved having to basically undo some of the work that was already done to install the gateway. Tip number three, and this is a massive one. So make sure you listen to this carefully and make sure you relay this information back to your installer because I've seen a lot of people get this wrong. So earlier, we mentioned that the batteries have a discharge rate. Both the five kilowatt hour battery and the eight kilowatt hour battery have their own discharge rate. If you add two eight kilowatt our batteries together, you get double the discharge rate. Same for the five kilowatt hours. Basically, as the batteries go up, the discharge rate goes up in a linear fashion. But what a lot of people maybe overlook or, or don't seem to realize is that you are at the mercy of not only the battery discharge rate, but the inverter discharge rate. And usually someone will forget one or the other. So. For example, if you have two eight kilowatt hour batteries, if you remember from earlier, that will mean that each battery has a continuous discharge rate of four kilowatts. If you have two then, it will obviously be eight kilowatts of discharge rate available from the batteries. If you then go and spec the inverter to not match the discharge rate of the batteries, then your inverter is going to bottleneck your batteries. So as a really, really easy example, got our eight kilowatts of discharge rate. If we then add a six kilowatt single phase hybrid inverter, the inverter is gonna bottleneck the battery discharge by two kilowatts. So although the potential discharge rate from the batteries is eight kilowatts, the inverter is then limiting that discharge rate to six kilowatts. Make sure the inverter discharge rate and the battery discharge rate 
match. That is very, very important. And if you think that you may add batteries in the future and even want to maybe add a little bit more capacity to the inverter, by all means, you can do that at the point you install. But then obviously you do have to also be aware of DNO restrictions as more commonly the DNO is putting limits on the amount of inverter capacity that's being allowed in a property. Okay then, so moving on to tip number four, make sure when you're planning the system, you think about future proofing from when the system is being installed. There are two options available for mounting your SIG Energy system. You have a wall mounted system and a floor mounted system. So I usually recommend wall mounting the batteries if you're limited on space and for safety, if you want them out of the way, uh, out of the reach of children or pets. But if you want to make sure the system is future proofed, then going with a system that is floor mounted on floor brackets is the best way to go by far. The wall mounting kit has weight restrictions, so you won't be able to add more than two batteries to the wall itself. Whereas with the floor mounting kit, you can add the full stack of batteries and you can also, if, if you want to sacrifice one of the batteries and maybe have a look at their DC charging options, perhaps now or in the future, where you can do two-way charging with your EV, then that will be very easy to do if you went with the floor mounting option. Whereas if you went with the wall mounted option, you may find that that would be very, very hard to do and likely impossible if you've already got two batteries. For future proofing, definitely go with the floor mounted system. It's the one I recommend for most people, unless there are real concerns about the batteries um, sort of being in the way or you know having access to by children or, or pets or, or something like that. And just as another little bonus tip for that as well, the batteries stack vertically. So when you are planning the install of your system, do keep that in mind. If you want to add batteries in the future, but perhaps the installer wants to put the gateway on top of the stack or perhaps any of the other components on top of the stack or maybe even yourself if, if you're thinking of putting it in a location where you can't stack vertically very high, bear that in mind when you're thinking about where the battery could go because that will limit your options for future upgrades and it may make the installation more costly if you have to then move the battery. Okay then, so tip number five, and this actually just relates back to the bonus tip I just gave you there as well. With the SIG Energy batteries, they are fully, fully future-proofed. So at the moment, you've got the eight kilowatt hour batteries and the five kilowatt hour battery. When SIG Energy releases their updated batteries that are high capacity, you know, any other products that SIG Energy release, they are going to be backwards compatible with the current offerings from SIG Energy, which is just music to my ears. Because if you think about other products, you've got the Tesla Powerwall 2, that won't work with a Tesla Powerwall 3, um, which is obviously a shame because if you've had a Powerwall 2, then you wanted to upgrade, it's gonna be very, very hard to do so. With the SIG Energy, the batteries are stackable and they are modular, so the current infrastructure the current components they will work with the newer components so having the system installed today is not going to affect your access to technology in the future um, which is just fantastic and it means the system can grow with you and grow with your energy demands um, and it's one of the biggest selling points and why i love sig energy so much all right so there you have it, five things to know before installing SIG Energy. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm planning on making a lot more videos this year, so do subscribe and also leave a comment down below. I will be replying to all the comments. So if you've got any questions or wanna pick my brain about anything at all, then please do. Also, if you've got any feedback, then I would love to hear it. By no means uh, do I know everything. So always looking forward to speaking to like-minded people. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.